today on Real Tree Global Hunting, we're out with Owen Beersmore of Service UK and Nathan Whitehead as they look to add a fallow to the coal box in the beautiful Chilterns. <laughs> the local deer population has to be moderated in order to keep the local ecosystem balanced. This is an important job in rural life as it keeps numbers manageable, herds healthy and the countryside balanced. The game taken during the annual cull is always returned to the food chain and the meat passed into the local butcher. Each animal is taken ethically and the hunting is always sustainable so that the herds stay healthy for generations to come. So we're down in Oxfordshire, um, it's just before Christmas. I'm out trying to uh, finish my call before Christmas, I'm um, looking for fallow does, I uh, can't do it on my own so I've got the likes of Nathan come down and help me. Um, how are you Nathan, alright? Yeah? Hey, uh, Foxing expert but he's also a very good stalker. Yeah. Nathan's going to go down and sit down in the seat below us and I'm going to sit over on the other side uh, and hopefully when I'm stalking I might be able to push a few deer over towards him. The boys head out. Nathan starts off towards the high seat. He hopes Owen Storkin will push some of the fallow into his area of the woods. As he heads towards his seat, he still moves quietly. There's always a chance that he might spot a deer on route. Meanwhile, Owen starts heading around on a loop. That way, any deer he accidentally alerts should be pushed towards Nathan. There's a thick mist out in the field. This provides cover for Owen as he looks to get into a better position to glass the field. It's a bit of a deja vu with that muntjac hunt here last autumn. Sure enough, Owen spots a small herd of fallow on the far side. He gets set up for a potential shot, but the fallow aren't staying still. Nathan has reached the stand. He gets into place and he waits. He's banking on Owen pushing the deer his way and he knows that this time in the morning the fallow prefer the open fields to the forested area that he's covering. An unusual situation here where there's a, there's a small, small group of fallow with a pricket with them and um, somehow they've got within a, an electric fence and this is this has been fenced for sheep to come in today. So how they've got in there, I don't know. But um, the lead doe is very aware of uh, what an electric fence is and she's not happy to cross it. So we saw them come all the way down the face wood. They've come back round, they've come up to us then, but unfortunately, yeah, they're about 130 metres away. Um, I couldn't take a shot because I hadn't got the background. So we're gonna try and sneak down this edge of this field and, uh, and get a backdrop. Hopefully they're going to be kept in this field by this electric fence. This stroke of luck for Owen is unfortunate for Nathan. When spooked, the deer would normally head for thick cover in the woods. With the fence in their way, they may head in another direction. As Owen moves around, some of the deer find a way out and run off into the brush. However, some are still unable to get out. Owen moves further around, looking for a safe shot. With a clear backstop, Owen sets up his position and waits for a fallow to present him with a clear opportunity. A young doe heads across the field through the mist. Owen needs it to hold his position. Hey. The shot's good and the doe drops straight down. So 
so our patience paid off and um, finally the form came up, presented the shot and I took the shot. Um, I, I just shot it in the engine room. Um, so I used a Hornady SST bullet. Um, you saw the knockdown uh, effect of that. And um, bullet's gone in just behind the shoulder where I aimed. Look where the... I've got an exit hole just on the shoulder. It must have been slightly angled, but um, very happy with that. Another one for the cool sheet and we're going to get him back to the larder. Unfortunately, the deer that got through the fence haven't headed in Nathan's direction. He waits a little longer, but it's been very quiet and he decides to call it a day. Owen takes the fallow doe to his larder. For the past five years, he's used his space to process all the dairy shoots on this territory. Even though the primary reason for the cull is to keep the fallow population in check, it is important that nothing is wasted. This deer will be sold onto the game dealer and turned into venison, ready for the table. You can see I'm using the uh, Keith Watson Grolican cradle. I've been using this for probably five years. This is the uh, Model 1, I think he's on Model 4 or 5 now. It's just the best bit of kit if you've got a lot of deer to grow it. Um, from the moment our deer are shot and they're put into a carcass tray, um, they never hit the floor again. Everything we do in the cradle, suspended grow it, so gravity's taking everything out. With deer growlicked, Owen heads out to check his trail cameras. Knowing your deer, their movements and patterns is key to successful deer management. This morning, when I've got a spare hour, I'm going to uh, look through what I've got. So this does all my reconnaissance without any stress or any hassle. Cameras just sit here on certain feed areas. I feed out uh, wheat and beans. And, and during the winter, I can tell what the uh, movements of the deer are. It's been a good day for Owen, with one more deer added to his cold sheet. And although Nathan hasn't seen any game today, time spent out in such beautiful countryside is never wasted. Maybe he'll have better luck next time. To book your deer hunting trip of a lifetime and to see the full range of trips offered by Service UK, visit their website. To find out more about the latest Pinewood clothing and Realtree APG, visit pinewood.eu today. To see more videos from Realtree Global Hunting, click one of the links. Subscribe to Team Wild TV to be kept up to date with each new episode.